Welcome back to the show, everybody. You know what I was thinking the other day? Why don't we get more remakes and reboots? I mean, there, there just aren't enough of them. And it baffles me. Give me more Disney live action remakes. You know, we all want it. <laughs> I'm kidding, of course. Remakes, reboots, and sequels are obviously dominating the film industry and have been for a long time. It's easy money and people eat them up. And the funny thing is, remakes and reboots have been a popular thing for so long now that we've come to a point where the same movie has been made three times. Halloween, Halloween, Halloween. The Thing, The Thing, The Thing. Texas Chainsaw Massacre, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, Texas Chainsaw, Texas Chainsaw Massacre. And of course, the Children of the Corn franchise is no exception exception to that. And well, that's the one we're going to talk about today. Based on the short story by Stephen King about a group of evil kids possessed by a corn monster, this very simple little premise somehow spawned a franchise of eight sequels. Eight sequels. As well as a 2009 direct-to-video remake and a 2020 reboot. Meaning, 11 movies in total. There are more Children of the Corn movies than there are Nightmare on Elm Street movies. What? Uh, who's watching these? I don't know, but what I do know is that today we're talking about three of these terrible abominations. I didn't bother watching any of the trash sequels because that is where I draw the line for my mental health. But I did watch the 1984 original, the 2009 remake, and of course that last atrocious reboot that came out in 2020. But here's the thing, COVID happened, so they pulled the movie out of theaters and it just now came out in 2023. Amazing. A full three years later. We were trying to, we tried to release it. We tried to, but we, you know, when something's not working, you, you know, pull the ripcord. <laughs> and nobody watched it. The original movie has about 55,000 ratings on IMDb and 50,000 votes on Rotten Tomatoes, whereas this new one has about 2,000 ratings on IMDb and less than 50 votes on Rotten Tomatoes. Ouch. Anyways, if you want to save time and just hear my quick thoughts, all these movies are just terrible. Amazing. Hardy hard. Just completely awful. Holy I guess the original is the closest we get to a pretty okay film, but even that one is just, it's so boring. <sighs> and speaking of which, let's start with that one. Walking around the movie. That's what it should have been called, because nothing happens in this movie. The opening scene is pretty great though. Old people are hanging out in a diner, and then this creepy little kid shows up with his army of evil children, and yeah, they murder all the adults. Grannies are choking on their poisoned coffee. You know, it's fun stuff. Only bummer is, that is literally the best scene of the movie. Nothing ever even comes close to being as entertaining as that. <gasps> the actual story of this movie is about this couple here, Bert and Vicky. <laughs> Now, Vicky's played by Linda Hamilton, and of course, both The Terminator and Children of the Corn came out the same year, and it just goes to show how important a director is. Linda Hamilton is great as Sarah Connor. I couldn't imagine anyone else for the role. And then you watch her act in Children of the Corn, and it's not the best. What the fuck? As for Peter, uh, for some reason, whenever I saw him, he kept reminding me of Skeletor from the Masters of the Universe movie. I I can't explain it. He just looks like him. Anyways, after that is the other best scene of the movie. So Bert and Vicky are on the road, and out of nowhere, little kid shows up, and they run him the fuck over. <laughs> Oh yeah. So after that little incident, they drive to the nearest town to, you know, report their child murder. And once they arrive, they notice that there's nobody there. And that, my friends, is when the walking around starts. 
That is all they do. And the few times when they're not walking around, well, they have these conversations that are shot in the most boring way possible. And we're standing here talking in circles, wasting our time. It feels like once they got to the town, the writers didn't really know what to do for this to be feature length. I guess that's what happens when you make a movie out of a short story that's 50 pages long. Anyways, back to the movie. At one point, the evil kids show up and they kidnap Vicky to offer her to their master. He who walks behind the rose. It was he who walks behind the rose. So Bert has to urgently rescue her. <laughs> you know what that means. Some more walking around. Now, in between these scenes with Vicky and Skeletor, we do cut back to the kids once in a while, and it's always played out the exact same way. The little kid leader, Isaac, is arguing with the other leader, Malachi, and all they ever do is argue all the time. It's supposed to add conflict, but it's just annoying. Little kids arguing, I don't care. Down on your knees, heretic! Shut your mouth, You've built five on apart from us! These kids are supposed to be scary murderers, but they just come off as lame and stupid. It also doesn't help that the extras are really bad. This kid is staring directly at the camera. This one looks like he's laughing the whole time. Okay, let's uh, let's skip to the end. So Malachi and Isaac are still fighting, but then the group of kids betray Isaac and offer him to the corn monster. I'm not sure why, I think they just don't like him. So that's when we get our monster reveal. And uh, oof, it's not very good. Monster isn't even the right word. It's it's more of a blob. Wow, that looks bad. Uh, otherwise, Bert saves Vicky. They burn the cornfield. They slam a door in a little girl's face, which is pretty funny. And I think they adopt kids. So what are we gonna do with these two little munchkins, huh? Guys wanna come live with us for a couple days? How about a week? How about a month? No. <laughs> All right, all right. What? That's Children of the Corn for you. Yeah, I didn't really love this one. I know it's a cult classic that people are very passionate about. It's a really cool concept, but with a stretched out story where not much happens. It's almost as if this would work better as a short story. Oh yeah. Despite being a horror film, this lacked any tension whatsoever. You're never really scared for these people. There's this one scene where Bert is completely cornered and he's got nowhere to go. Okay, finally. Some tension. How's he gonna get out of this one? And then he just very easily runs away. Get off! Go get him! That was easy. Hold the Outlander! Add to that the laughably bad special effects for the monster at the end, and you got your mediocre cheap 80s horror flick. I'd give Children of the Corn something like a 5 out of 10. It's better than getting punched in the face. Okay, on to the 2009 remake, a TV movie with no budget brought to you by the director of Perfect Fit, a classic. Funny enough, this guy was also a producer on the original 1984 film, and the way he talks about it in this interview I found, this guy comes across as being the most egotistical, narcissistic man alive. I was in charge of the film. I required that the protagonist live at the end, and in every way I changed the story. He pretty much says that the entire success of the Children of the Corn franchise is all thanks to him. It was a very successful and effective piece. We made a great deal of money with it. There were like five producers on that film, and you want to take all the credit? Um, only but for the fact that I've been doing this for well over 25 years and have over 30 films produced under my belt, is it the case that I could figure out a production agenda that could complete this? and I'm happy to say that we met the challenge. Dude, shut the fuck up. Anyways, this is probably the worst one out of the three, but also kind of the best as well. Holy Jesus! Just like the original, it tells the story of Bert and Vicky. By the way, this film takes place in the 70s, and these guys are the most 2009 people I've seen in my entire life. This is supposed to be a man from the year 1975. You guys couldn't slap a mustache on him or something? How did I end up married to a son of a bitch like you in the first place, huh? I didn't... I, I don't... <laughs> I don't believe for a fucking second that this takes place in the 70s. Not in the 70s. Okay, we gotta get this out of the way. I'm not exaggerating when I say that these characters 
might be the most unbearably unlikable characters in cinema history. You know what? I've about had it with you. There is no hyperbole here. I hated them and I wanted them dead. A story about two people at the bitter end of a terrible marriage who'd like to see each other dead. Shut up. <laughs> they just keep arguing and screaming at each other all the time for the whole fucking movie. Is that all right, sir? Is that all right for me to be scared, sir? By me. You know that awkward feeling when a couple starts arguing in front of you and you'd just rather be anywhere else? Yeah, that's that's the whole movie for you. Anyways, just like in the first film, they run a kid over while arguing, of course. We can just turn around and see that lawyer you wanted to see because I have had it. Watch out! It's really funny. Now, you'd think that child murder would take the priority over marital problems. No, instead Vicky uses this opportunity to just be a giant asshole. You can tell all your NRA buddies what you bagged in Nebraska? Huh? Big Vietnam War hero? Huh? Come on, John Wayne! What are you gonna do? It's no time to go Section 8, kid! With a dead child in their trunk, the couple that would like to see each other dead would like to see each other dead. They drive to the nearest town where, you guessed it, they argue again. What are you gonna do? Hmm? Are you gonna assault me? Give me the bag! Give me the bag! Give me the bag! Purse! Give it to me! Give me the bag! Give me the purse! In the meantime, we're also introduced to the evil kids of this film, including, of course, their leader, Isaac. And this time around, they got the least threatening kid possible, with an oversized hat that looks like it could fall at any moment. This kid looks like Jacob Tremblay. When I see this guy, I believe he's a crazy evil guy. When I see this kid, I see a cute little kid flubbing his lines. So now you must make sacrifice unto me. What? So now you must make sacrifice unto me. I can't understand you. So, while Bert is exploring the church, the kids show up to attack Vicky. And the whole time Isaac is on the roof, making signs to tell them what to do. But it just looks like he's making shit up as he goes along. Look at little maestro over here. Realizing that these kids want to murder her, Vicky does the only logical thing. She hides in the car. Without the keys. Whoops. Yeah, kill her. Not to worry though, surely Bert will arrive just in time to save his wife and their marriage. Wait, no. She blows up. <laughs> Holy Jesus. Holy Jesus! After this, finally, some corn in this Children of the Corn movie. A lot of corn, actually. In fact, the last 35 minutes of this film are spent in corn. People run in corn, crawl in corn, get their necks snapped in corn. <laughs> Sing awkwardly in corn. Sowing in the morning, sowing seeds of kindness, sowing in the noontime and the dewy eve. It's just a lot of corn. And then we've come to this. I didn't want to talk about it, but we don't really have a choice, do we? I mean, this is based on a Stephen King story, so you know there's gonna be a kid orgy. <laughs> I'm a little bit uncomfortable. <laughs> really did not need to see that. Oh, thank God the movie's coming to an end when Bert finally finds a way to escape the corn maze by following the stars. Did you really need to do that? Did you actually need to do that? Okay, yeah, got it. Unfortunately though, Bird dies. That's right, he who walks behind the rose shows up to kill him. And when I say shows up, I actually mean there's a POV shot getting close to his face before fading to black. Like it's the IT miniseries. The uh, uh, he who walks behind the rose will definitely be a CGI fabrication, uh, 3D uh, model that's animated and made to interact with uh, Bert. I got bad news for you, buddy. He never shows up. And then, uh, turns out he's a spooky scarecrow now. And his wife also. Wait, I thought she blew up. 
Yeah, that's the shitty ending for you. Ah, uh, Children of the Corn 2009. It's a baffling how bad this movie is, but like I said, it's also perhaps the most entertaining. <laughs> yes, the couple is insufferable. It is a chore to go through their awful fights and their shitty insults. Come on, John Wayne! But you do get your unintentional funny moments here and there. Let my aim be true because I will! I laughed my ass off when these kids here just fall down on their faces and they they kept that in you guys didn't want to do another take where the kids don't fall down on their faces and also I'll give the movie this it really goes for it in the other films the adults are just completely incompetent and completely powerless against these snot-nosed little brats but here Bert just beats the fucking shit <laughs> Bert just beats the shit out of them effortlessly even stabs one in the neck and proceeds to throw a terrible one-liner why don't you put that in your gut and smoke it? Mind you, his wife just exploded 30 seconds ago. Now, this is also a very 2009 movie with its style and editing choices, which just adds to the comedic factor. Stop it. All in all, I would give this remake something like uh, 2 out of 10, maybe? It's impossibly bad and incompetent. <laughs> but it was fun to laugh at it. And I'm happy to say that we met the challenge. Okay, everybody, on to the 2020 Children of the Corn remake slash reboot. And oh my God, it's not good. I just watched this and I don't remember anything that happened. This whole movie is incredibly confusing and nonsensical. I mean, just the opening scene, I still don't understand it. So it starts with this possessed evil kid who breaks into an orphanage and he kills all the adults, I think, because it's all off screen. Oh, boy, no! The next scene, the sheriff is here and he gasses the place up. Just fills it with poison. Big shocker. We then cut to a shot of dead, asphyxiated kids. I mean, yeah. This was at a children's home. It makes sense that there were children in that. Nothing is set up properly. You don't even know what's happening. And it just never comes back. After that is where we meet this reboot's version of Isaac. Except this time it's a little girl called Eden. And for some dumb reason, they do these Alice in Wonderland parallels. Even though it doesn't add anything to the story whatsoever. The Red Queen. The Red Queen. The Red Queen. Eden calls herself the Red, the Red Queen. Queen. And then she wears a red wig. And they just really want you to understand the reference here. Like the Red Queen, Alice in Wonderland? Yeah, I got it. No, I got it the first time, actually. Okay, I'm so sorry for this, but it's time to meet our main character of this movie. Her name is Bo, and she has one single facial expression for this whole film. Anyways, Bo has a brother, and already the attempt at conflict here is laughable. It's an undergraduate degree in microbiology, all right? It's not an eternity. It is. Why would you ever come back? I know you hate it here. Yeah, you're leaving, and you don't even like it here in this shitty state where nothing happens. Oh, by the way, this is never paid off. Never mentioned again. Yeah, already this was a pretty shitty scene. And then, of course, it ends with a jump scare. Yeah, they were jump scared by a horse. You know, that, that very large animal that you can hear from far away. In any case, it's now time to get into the actual plot of the film. So here's what this Children of the Corn movie is all about. Corn politics. I'm not kidding. Yes, the story and entire conflict is based around people arguing about their cornfield. Ah. Mmm. Smell those toxins. So basically, the government will pay them to stop growing corn. I guess that's something the government does. I don't know. But in any case, the adults all agree to do so. Our corn is dying. Yeah. It's been like that for a couple years, and they can't really do anything about it. So, you know, might as well get the money and start anew. Sounds to me like a pretty logical thing to do. But for some reason, Bo is angry. She shames her dad and treats him like a monster for this. You all should be ashamed. What do you care so much about corn? You're like a 16 year old girl. Since when did you become a corn activist? Anyways, back to corn politics. Federal government will subsidize, pay us not to grow corn. 
the adults have all agreed to destroy the thing in exchange for some money. But then Eden shows up and she's like, wait a minute, not everybody voted. Us kids, we didn't vote. All right, we're doing this. Everyone's voted. Except everyone hasn't voted. Oh my God. Oh god, and this leads to probably the funniest scene of any of these movies. The adults legit just start bullying the kids. Children! Having a say. <laughs> the kids! <laughs> Little kids! <laughs> Voting! <laughs> Oh, I love it. The editing, the acting, the overall execution of that scene. Voting! <laughs> so after learning about this tragic news, Bo has a plan. If the adults really want to destroy the cornfield in exchange for money, Corn economy can kiss my ass. Yeah! Bo decided to DM a reporter who will show up to their town and write an article to expose the adults for the scum they are. Public humiliation. What? The fuck? First off, again, why do you care so much about fucking corn? I don't know. But secondly, why would a professional reporter make an article about something so uninteresting? The people of this town have come to an agreement. Why don't you just let them be? Well, in any case, that's what Bo wants for some reason. And lucky for her, she found the perfect reporter. Sheila Boyce. That's right, Sheila Boyce from the famous social media platform NowCloud. Omaha reporter for NowCloud? Top skill? Presenting. Researching. Journalism. That's not... That's a job, that's not a skill. Where's the reporter? Sheila Boyce? Doesn't really matter anymore, Bo. Oh, I guess it doesn't matter anymore. Now, before we move on with the plot, things haven't really been scary yet. In fact, I've been bored out of my mind and we're 30 minutes in, so we need something to wake the audience up. And I've got just a scene for you. It's so bad. It's so bad and so out of place. What was that? But the funniest thing about this scene is that nobody reacts in any way afterwards. <sighs> oh, Betty, bye for me. You guys didn't hear her scream very loudly right next to you? Okay, so after that is where the plot really starts going. So Bo gets to the town hall where they were supposed to have a trial with that journalist. Sheila Boyce. Whose top skill is journalism. And then the little shit Eden is there, eating an apple for some reason. And guess what? Turns out she's full on evil now. So she hangs the guy that was bullying her earlier. Remember that guy? Little kids! <laughs> the kids voting! <laughs> And then from this point on, all the kids in this town now want to murder the adults. Um, I guess the town hall meeting does happen after all, except all the adults are in a jail cell. Yeah, I guess the kids are really strong. And this is where things get confusing once more. Eden gasses the adults, who then wake up in a large pit where the kids bury them alive. Which, by the way, with the time it takes to fill that hole up, Pretty sure the adults could just climb out of there. But uh, here it's presented as if that dirt immediately killed them. But what really confuses me here with this scene is why did they bring the adults in a cell and gas them to put them to sleep to then bring them in a pit instead of just bringing them directly in the pit. But what's more, when Bo goes back to the station, there's like a couple more adults that are still there, including Bo's dad. Why did you kill everybody except these four guys? I don't know. Anyways, then they kill this guy. Again, I don't know why they didn't just throw him in the pit like the others who are also dead. And then the rest of the adults get sent in the corn. And guess what? All of them die, including Bo's dad. You know, one of the most important characters in this movie. You know how Bo wanted to save the corn? but uh, her dad didn't and they fought about it and that was their attempt at conflict in this movie. Let's just forget about all that. Doesn't really matter anymore. Instead, she finds his dead body and she's like, oh no, dad, okay, bye. Hey, speaking of dead, do you remember that journalist from earlier? Sheila Boyce. Well, she's about to be killed by he who walks. That's right, everyone. It's time for the big monster reveal. And it turns out this time around, it's just a big CGI abomination. It looks really bad. So he shows up, kills that reporter by tearing her in half. And after that, he just shakes her around a little bit. 
and then fucking yeet her out. Anyways, I'm tired. Let's just end this. So Bo burns the cornfield and Eden and the monster, I guess they go die in the field. They just give up. And then it abruptly cuts to however many hours later and the cornfield is all completely destroyed. And for some reason, Bo is still there hanging out in that deserted cornfield. What are you doing there? What are you doing there? And wh what the hell happened to the other kids? You know, Bo's little brother? What happened to him? Doesn't really matter anymore. Now, do you remember that really out of place jump scare from earlier? I guess they liked that scene so very much that they decided to end the movie with that. <laughs> what the hell are you doing, movie? Yeah, this wasn't good. It's kind of funny how all three movies are pretty bad for such different reasons. The original is just boring, the 2009 movie is irritating, and this new 2020 movie is just confusing. Oh, really? The scenes don't make any sense, nothing flows together well, nothing's ever paid off. You never really understand anyone's motivation. Why does Bo care so much about Korn? Why did Eden turn evil? Was she evil all along? Was it the monster? I don't know. Why did she turn into a CGI zombie corn monster at the end? Did they not find that embarrassing? Yeah, uh, I think I would give this one something like uh, a 1 out of 10. You know, they might say nothing really ever dies in the corn, but I think it's time for this franchise to be torn in half and tossed in the trash. Do us all a favor, just let it burn and die. Well, this surely was a terrible day in my life. Thankfully, I don't hate myself enough to watch the terrible sequels. I still don't know who the hell they're making these movies for. Was anyone really excited about Children of the Corn 666? Isaac's Return? I don't think so. But anyways, what did you think of these movies? What do you want me to talk about next? And most importantly, why would you bring people in a jail cell only to gas them and bring them somewhere else? Just put them in the pit. Please let me know in the comments below, I need to know. And until next time, just keep watching horror movies, except these ones. It's good for your health. Bye bye.